Hey guys, Wally Renee here from the Mod Institute. Um, you guys wanted a tutorial on partial dentures, which is like the easiest thing in the world to design, especially if you're going monolithic. Split file is actually just as easy. So let's get through a simple case and you could extrapolate from there. We do have a course that we teach on removables. It's dentures, partial dentures, and immediate dentures, where we go through design and finishing. We have a few of those coming up. Um, that you could come hang out with me and and basically we go through a bunch of cases and we print a bunch of stuff. So I'm gonna open up uh, Plameca's version of ExoCAD called PlanCAD Premium. It's full-blown ExoCAD Galway Ultimate. So if you're running ExoCAD, you'll be able to perfectly follow along. Um, let's just see here, default client, let's just call this um, practice partial. We'll do a really easy case. Um, I think it's tooth number eight. We'll literally just call this partial denture. Let's just click uh, 3D printing, design support bar, no. All right, that should be it. I'll come over here and throw in an antagonist. <clears throat> so that's literally it. We're, we're gonna replace tooth number eight. Um, We'll call this digital impression scans. We'll save it. So that's in a nutshell the setup. If you had multiple ponics, you just drag this over and you could do connectors and stuff like that. But for this particular instance, I think it's just a single tooth if I remember correctly. So let's go ahead and uh, launch design. We'll show you um, split file because it's a little bit um, I think that's what everybody wants to do. Although monolithic is like a really fast, I mean, we could print a, we could print this in 15 minutes out of Flexera and do a same day flipper uh, all day long. Uh, let's see here. Do an opposing. Yeah, so this is just an intraoral scan. Uh, I scanned this with an Emerald S patient. Uh, I actually designed an adhesion bridge on this particular case and delivered a bonded Flexera adhesion bridge. Um, but let's design a flipper. This is a, a surgical site with a graft uh, guided bone regeneration healing. And I don't like when I do those to have a partial pounding the ridge. I, I think it leads to resorption. So I always put a, put a fixed prosthetic like, a, like an adhesion bridge. Um, all right, but anyway, set the orientation to look straight down. This is going to be so easy. It's going to be stupid. You're going to wonder why you're farming all your stuff out to labs. I want to preface that by saying I love my laboratories. I work with them closely, but easy, stupid stuff like this does not need to go to a lab. Um, they get all my high-end, big full-mouth reconstructions, big zirconia work. Anyway, I digress. Uh, 3D data editor. This is um, if you want to trim any flash. Uh, that's annoying, so I'm just going to cut that out and hit delete. But you optionally could skip that step. If there's over intrusions on your bite, all bites, uh, digital impressions have these over intrusions. Um, some people say it's because the mandible flexes uh, as they close down and, the, and it's capturing that uh, versus physical impressions where you just it's impossible to get over articulation from stone, right? You can't push the stone through the stone. So it's never been a problem for physical impressions, but it has nothing to do with the inaccuracy of the software. In fact, it's quite the opposite. The software is accurate and it's showing the flexure of the mandible and that over articulation, PDL space is flexing and mandibular flexion. Um, fixed by cutting away. I don't like to do that for partials because if you had a rest seat or you're plating, um, if you're doing lingual plating or something, the the software will actually ditch the real teeth and then the partial won't see it. So I'm just going to hit don't modify scan data. Okay, so now it's um, literally, by the way, S is upper arch, A is antagonist. You could toggle on and off. Very easy. So I'm going to go ahead. It's asking me on in the wizard mode, uh, mesial contact point of eight. So I'm just going to go bam. Wow, what, what, what did I just do? Mesial contact to distal contact point. Um, don't spend hours at this stage like trying to 
get the tooth perfectly seated. Oh, by the way, this is also where you could change your libraries. Um, if you wanted like a little bit more square library, like this particular person has actually, um, this is like a triangle, square triangle. Um, it's my favorite library is the Saurus, not elderly. Where are you at? Yeah, I use this for everything. It's my signature. I'm just gonna go ahead and hit next. It's okay that it's crooked because when you get to the next stage, you just basically have a floating tooth. Now your hotkeys, control, rotates, uh, shift, expands, and shrinks. Um, clicking it and moving it, and then control shift like will like stretch it like rubber in the direction of your thingamajig, your arrow. So that's basically what I'm going to do here. Let's get it in alignment. You could also very easily mirror image this tooth, but I don't want to. But it's uh, literally like a few clicks of a button. We won't get into that today. I'm going to go ahead and shrink this just a little bit. That's looking pretty friggin' awesome. Maybe just pump that out just a little bit like that. I love this thing right here. This, this is making me happy. Okay, let's just go ahead and hit next. Now we're going to go to Adapt, Approximal, and we're going to cut those proximal contacts. Let me show you what it's doing. So if I go on here and turn on my and adjacents, that's actually not a bad contact right there. Let me make it bad. Okay, that's too heavy. So if I go to my Adapt, Cut Intersections, it's going to cut it and make a perfect proximal contact. And usually what I do, if this is concave, I'll go here and um, smooth from the sides to make it not concave. Um, but that blue color is what you want. Just smooth this up here while I'm looking at this. Now, the next step is your adapt pontic. Go ahead and adapt to gingiva and cut it. Now, this is where you do have some options. Um, based off of how much tissue pressure you want. <clears throat> Let me show contacts. So show intersections just only shows where two meshes are, are intersecting with one another. Triangles overlap. Where if you go to show, con show contacts, it's a, it's a more accurate representation of pressure. Um, so there's a few ways to look at this. You could turn on your um, soft tissue and you could even make it um, clear this and you could see um, we got some the pink represents in this heat map a little bit of negative pressure i'm going to go ahead and alleviate if, if, if i was doing this case for real and we had a surgical site i actually alleviate a good bit of pressure on that site i do not try to create an ovate tonic at this stage, uh, personally, because I want my graft to heal and not get pounded. Okay, so then we once we get our ponic pressure the way that we want it, we're going to go ahead and cut the occlusion. So if you could see here, we're just going to go to adapt, occlusal, cut. That's going to cut it at the perfect occlusal contact strength. And you'll even see some like... Um, Almost gives you like some wear facets, which I like to go in here and just go to uh, add, remove, and hold shift. Just melt down those facets a little bit. Okay. Good. We're done with the ponic design, and now we have to design our gingiva. So it has, um, don't go to partial CAD design. You don't want to do that. That's a whole other beast. Design overdenture gingiva is what you want to click next. And literally, this is the easiest thing in the world to do. I don't know why. Just pick your path of insertion of your partial denture. So probably something like that. Set direction from view and hit apply. And it's going to go ahead and create a block out model, which is going to flow wax automatically into undercuts to allow for seating of the partial. Now, if you're doing a friction fit flex partial denture, you could go back now and edit using this freeforming tool 
those undercuts to specifically engage. Let's see if it'll let me do that. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I probably, I probably would class that central. And so if, if so, I would go to add remove and hold shift and engage a little bit more of that undercut there, a little bit more of that undercut there. And I probably would engage just a smidge on these premolars like that. So then I'm going to go ahead and go to next. And now I'm going to actually draw my design. Um, for this particular case, I accidentally dropped a ball right there. I probably come from the second. Um, let me clear those balls. Second premolar. I'll do some plating, engaging into these undercuts. I'd probably come like this. Um, I'd probably come through here. I'd come like that. I'd create a little tissue there, a little clasp here, like a little bat wing. I'd come up here, do some plating through here, all the way to the second premolar, come down and create a horseshoe like that. This is a little bit too thin for a printed prosthetic here. It'll snap at this connector right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and beef that out a little bit like that. Thickness, uh, three millimeters. Doesn't let you type it in. Um, so it, it'll default to two. Go ahead and hit two and in a, in a, um, go ahead and bump everything to two and redo the algorithm. So we could go back and manually add thickness if we need to. Three is uh, beefy. Two is the minimum you'd ever want it uh, for a printed uh, partial denture. So we'll go ahead and freeform now. And you can see where we got some areas that we need to smooth. So smooth, flatten, smooth that down a little bit. What I'm going to do is um, smooth the borders here, making those thin. And you can put that strength all the way up. And then here, I'm going to thin out that just a little bit. Patient doesn't want a tumor. And right here, I'm going to melt this back with my anatomic small region. It won't let me, huge region. Let's see. I want to expose some more of that tooth. Just going between smooth. Add remove, melting back some of that. Smooth. The strength uh, right here is not important, right above the CEJ. What's important is this area right here and here. It has to be kind of thick for a printed. So that papilla area there and this area right here. It looks so thick on the screen, um, but we haven't cut it to the gingiva yet. See, it's sticking through. So let's go to next. Now we're going to create our pocket. And underneath the pocket, we want at least a millimeter, which means we're going to have a, like a small tooth. So it's going to cut that pocket. And that's it. 
Okay, so if you look, we have our gingiva design and our tooth. And there's our little pocket. I prefer to keep this thick rather than making a, a deeper indentation because you get a chemical covalent bond between the printed materials. So I don't need a giant mechanical retention here. Um, you do want some type of seating indentation like you see here, but I'd rather have this be strong than have a paper thin area here, which it'll just break away um, when you design it. So yeah, and then you just print. So what you do is you just export this as a STL, right click, save as STL, and print that out of Flexera base. And then let's see, you print the tooth here at a Flexera smile and you bond them together in like five seconds and go to town.